Creating this computer fan grill is a great way to blend surface and solid modeling. And if you have workflow tips, drop them in the comments. Let's get started. You see the keyboard shortcuts I use in the bottom left corner. We're off to a good start by following the first rule of Fusion, creating a new activated component. Next, create a sketch to define the boundaries of your grill. I recommend using a center rectangle. It helps keep the design centralized above the origin. I'm setting my dimensions to 120 by 120 millimeters, but you can easily adjust this to fit your needs since the size won't impact the workflow. I'm only creating one circle instead of four because I'll use solid modeling features to create the other three holes. This approach keeps the design more flexible making future edits easier. The dimensions are just for quality control, ensuring the hole is positioned correctly. They also make it easier to create the rectangular pattern later in the workflow, since we now know the distance between the hole and the boundary of the center rectangle. We'll also create a center diameter circle in the middle, which will serve two different purposes later in the workflow. Let's wrap up the first sketch and start a second one. This new sketch will isolate the honeycomb pattern, making it easier to work with. We'll use the same construction plane as the first sketch and draw directly on top of it. Create a circumscribed polygon for the honeycomb pattern and place it at the center of your design. Next, add two lines to guide the honeycomb layout, one vertical and one at a 45 degree angle. When sketching, Fusion helps you find the midpoint of a side, making placement easier. Convert these lines into construction lines so they don't interfere with the final shape. At this point, you should have one polygon sketch and two construction lines. Ensure you select the rectangular pattern option designed for the sketch environment. You can recognize it by the small icon without infill. Select the entire polygon first, then choose your two construction lines as direction guides. Our polygon has a radius of 5 mm, meaning a diameter of 10 mm. Set the distribution to spacing and use a volume slightly over 10 mm for a well-proportioned pattern. Change direction from one direction to symmetric. If the spacing settings were accidentally adjusted while creating the pattern, you can easily correct them in the rectangular pattern settings window. We're creating this pattern in a separate sketch to allow for over sketching and adding more polygons. This also gives us the flexibility to refine the pattern and control which areas we extrude later. You're done when you have polygons covering the entire area. Think about it, we're not extruding the polygons themselves. That would leave us with floating polygons separated by empty space. Instead, we're extruding the area between the polygons. Next. We need to define this area and align it with the design from the first sketch. We'll use the project tool to bring in and link the circle from sketch 1, ensuring everything stays connected. Finish your sketch once you've projected the circle. Before we move on, Let's quickly summarize. You should have two sketches in the browser. Sketch 2 contains the polygons and the projected circle from sketch 1. Sketch 1 contains the outer boundaries of the model and the circle, which defines the boundary between the polygon section and the solid section. Now is a good time to extrude the area between the rectangle and the circle in sketch 1. I'll set the extrusion height to 10 mm giving us material to work with when we remove material later in the design process. 
Sketch 1 was automatically hidden when we extruded this body, so we can turn off the visibility of body 1 and then turn on the visibility of sketch 2. Before extruding the honeycomb pattern, we need to fix a small mistake. The projected circle was mistakenly set as a construction line, so we'll edit the sketch and convert it into a regular line to make it part of the design. Now we can proceed with the extrusion. Instead of setting a fixed height of 10 mm, I'll turn on the visibility of body 1 and extrude to its top. This way, if we adjust body 1's height later, the honeycomb pattern will automatically update since it's downstream in the fusion timeline. Set this to a new body operation if you want more flexibility when working with the bodies in your design. It's best to create the rectangular pattern for the holes while the model remains simple. Set the object type to Faces and select the hole's face. Choose both axes to distribute the pattern in two directions. The total width is 120 mm with the hole positioned 10 mm from the edge. Setting the total extent to 100 mm ensures the holes are evenly spaced, maintaining a 10 mm gap from both sides. We're filleting the corners now to keep things simple before adding complexity. Specifically, the rounded shape will give the bodies. An easy way is to select all sides, switch to the top view in the view cube and apply the fillet from there. If needed, we can always adjust it later through the timeline. You could also fill it later in the design process. What do you think are the pros and cons of filleting now versus later? Share your thoughts. Now, it's time to tackle the delicate curved shape. We'll start with the new sketch on the central construction plane. The fit point spline is great for creating smooth curvature in cases like this, but plenty of other tools can work depending on your needs and preferences. One reason I recommend the fit point spline is the green handlebars. They make refining the curvature easy. Make sure your spline extends beyond the model. The exact distance isn't critical, but it must cover the corners for the next steps. One advantage of surface modeling is the ability to extrude lines. Now we'll extrude this line just a tiny bit to create a surface we can thicken. The exact thickness doesn't matter. If you prefer a larger value, go for it. It's a fast workflow that still gets the job done. Think of this new large body as a tool we'll use in the next steps. Use a revolve cut operation to trim away parts around your model, using your latest body as the cutting tool. This is why we made it extra long, to ensure the corners get removed too. Once again, Creating a body around the central axis at the origin pays off, making selections fast and precise. Hide any remaining parts you don't need, then take a moment to admire your model before we explore the possibilities when adding appearances. A glossy plastic appearance will look great and it's 3D printable. Earlier, we chose to create the honeycomb pattern as a new body instead of joining it. This choice makes it easy to color each body separately, 
which might be useful for some of you. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, subscribe to the Maker Letters and check the video description for more learning resources. See you in the next video.